Before we get to the proper subset, is it obvious that it's a subset or equal to? Good. Yeah. We know that this is true because if we have more time, what time means is the set of functions a Turing machine exists that can compute those functions within that number of steps or fewer. So if we increase the number of steps, we can always do all the functions we could before. 2 to the n to c is greater than n to the c. It's definitely true once c is greater than 2. To show the additional property that it's a proper subset, what do we need to do? Good. Yeah, we need to know there's some function in exp. It's not in p. Do we know any functions that would work for our choice of f here? Yeah. Longest path. Good possibility. So what would we have to know to know that the longest path works for this? We know the longest path is definitely exp. Do we know that it's not in p? If you knew that, you would all have A pluses in the class. It's not known whether it's in p or not. So that's not going to work. So maybe they're the same. At least the one problem that we think we know is hard. Well, two problems. We know 3sat. We know longest path. We can think of some other problems that are hard. But we don't know for sure that it's not in P. To know that something can't be done is hard. To know that it's not in P, we'd have to know there is no polynomial time algorithm that can solve it. We don't know of one. And we know that no one else knows of one either. Or if they know of one, they're keeping it very secret for some national security reasons. But as far as we know, no one knows of one. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We just haven't found it yet, maybe. We'd have to prove that that function cannot be done with any polynomial time Turing machine to know that it's not in P. So is there some other function we could use for this that would separate these classes? What's an example of a function that we know is not in EXP? Do we know any functions not in EXP? Yeah. Yeah, good. All of our undecidable problems, these are uncomputable functions. So. Forget whether we're limited to an exponential number of steps. We can't solve these with no limit. We know that there's, there's no algorithm that solves it, that for any finite number of steps is guaranteed to finish. So we know Hulse is not in EXP. Can we make a version of Hulse that will be in EXP? Yeah, sure. Hulse is defined as it's eventually going to stop forever. Well, we can modify halts, create a new function that is going to be, so that's a long name for it. It takes as input a Turing machine, and it outputs true if that machine would halt within 2 to the end of the 100 steps, where now n is still the length of the input. Right, so now that input is the Turing machine. This is a very well-defined function. How can we solve that within time exp? Sure. We simulate the machine described by the input for up to two to the end of the 100 steps. And if it still hasn't halted, we output zero. So this is within exp. Do we know if that's in p? Yeah. Well, for that to be in p, we'd have to simulate every possible Turing machine faster than it can actually run. To simulate two to the end of the 100 steps in something that is only scale as n to the c, well, that's a smaller number of steps. So we've got to simulate the Turing machine in less steps than it is. Is that possible? For some machines, it might be. But it better not be possible for all machines. If we could do that for all machines, then the machine that we're using to simulate them, we should simulate that one. And we can simulate that one in fewer steps than it took before. And then we can simulate that one in fewer steps. Eventually, every machine runs in no steps. Something's really wrong if we can simulate every machine in fewer steps than it actually takes. So we know that that is not in P. This is maybe not a super interesting function. It's not something well-defined like longest path. But it's one that we can clearly say is definitely within class EXP and not within P. So we know those classes are separate. And that's all we need to know that this is true. We've separated two really big complexity classes, right? 
So I sort of told you the longest path is an EXP. Was that actually correct? We should look a little more carefully how EXP is defined before we assume this is correct. Here's our definition of EXP. This definition defines both P and EXP. And they're defined very precisely. It is a set of functions. And it is a set of functions from 0, 1 star to 0, 1. So the output is just 1, 0, or 1. And to be in EXP, there's some polynomial such that there's a machine that computes that function in fewer than 2 to the p length of input steps. For this precise definition of EXP is longest path within EXP. So what's the output of longest path? Yeah. Well, we kind of have a type miss. So the output of longest path, this is some natural number. It's a length. It's not just 0 or 1. Definitely, there can be longer paths than 0 or 1. And in order to be in EXP the way this was defined, its output should only be either a 0 or a 1. So this is saying we're only talking about decision problems. We're talking about functions that only output 0 or 1. So does it make sense to talk about longest path in EXP? It's not the way that we define longest path here. Can we fix that? Good, yeah. So we're going to add a number. We're going to add a number. So we're going to turn it into a decision problem. What we're going to do, we're adding a path length. And now what the output means is whether or not there is a path of that length. The output is 0 if there's no path of that length. The output is 1 if there is a path of at least that length, so that length or longer. So now we have a decision problem. We've added one input. It's an input that is not as hard to find as the actual path. If what we have is a Turing machine that solves longest path decision in polynomial time, can we solve longest path in polynomial time? So our goal now, and we can write this instead of as a Turing machine because I don't have enough room on the slide, our goal is to implement longest path. And we already have an implementation of longest path decision. Someone has given us an implementation of this function that does the decision problem. Is there a way that we can now solve longest path? Yeah, we can start at 0. How high do we need to go up? Yeah, it's so a simple path. The longest possible answer is the number of vertices. So we're going to go from 0 to, this is not Python code, up to the length of vertices. And then we're going to try passing in the graph, s, t, and n. And what should we do now? What we actually want to do, we want a not here. We're going to keep going until that is false. If that returns 0, that means there is no path of that length or more. And then whichever the last one it was was the longest. So we're going to return, we could return n minus 1. So is this polynomial time? So we're assuming this is in polynomial time. To be within polynomial time, if the number of times we're calling it is a polynomial, we're still in polynomial time. So we're going through this loop up to the number of vertices time. Remember, we're always talking about with respect to the size of the input. So how does the number of vertices relate to the size of the input? Well, we'd have to think a little bit about how to encode it. If the graph was encoded as just a number, the value of a number can be exponential in terms of their size. Encoding the graph, we need to encode the edges. But we didn't say anything about the number of edges here. So each edge requires some log of the number of vertices. If we're going to encode two vertices, we could identify them with the log of the number of vertices. Or we could encode the graph as an adjacency matrix. So if this is the graph, we're going to put ones in the places where there are edges between the two nodes. right? So that's going to be an input size that is the length of v squared is what we need to encode the graph. So is the number of iterations polynomial or exponential in the size of the input? We should be a little worried. It might be exponential. Because this is the value. This is not the length of v. This is the magnitude of v. Going through the number of vertices. Can we solve this problem and be more convinced this is going to be in polynomial time? Is there a more efficient way to search for the right value of n? 
right? We don't have to actually loop through one by one. So if we're searching for n, we can do a binary search. We can do a binary search. If we do a binary search, then we're going to be in log of the iterations. And that's definitely polynomial in the size of the input. The size of the input is, if it's this adjacency matrix, is log of v squared, and we're doing log of v iterations. This means that if we have a polynomial time solution to longest path decision, we can use it to get a polynomial time solution to longest path. Any problem that is to find an, an input like this that we can break down this way, we can always convert to a decision problem. You should think carefully about if something is framed as a problem that's not a decision problem, what the equivalent decision problem will be. Because all of these complexity classes are really defined for decision problems. So now we get to the tougher question, which we've kind of alluded to. Whether longest path is in P. Right? So we know it's within EXP. And I'm going to use longest path now to mean the longest path decision problem. This is such a tough question. We need to listen to a song. Oh. Hopefully that helped. You've had some insight and inspiration now. But we don't know the answer. So we have this open question. We don't know whether it's in P or not. We know it's in EXP. What we're going to get to now is, well, there is a class that we know that it's in that's a very interesting class, which is this class that is called NP. Right away, do we know something about the relationship between NP and EXP, even without telling you what NP is? Since we already said we know there are problems that are in EXP that are not in P, and we know that longest path is in P, if we didn't already know as a proper subset of EXP, well, we would know something else. It would cause other problems. So we do know that it's a proper subset of EXP. Whoa. 